Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's Dobbin Raid. It's 1811, 1311, 2021. Yes, it's Dead of Social on the amazing stage here with your host, Dobbin Nine, and with our special guest on the show today. Oh, my word. I'm quite excited to have her on the show uh, today. She's going to be giving us some amazing content, amazing entertainment. As you know, we're always bringing a, a fresh vibe on the radio as well. Wow, I'm sure you guys are wondering, why is Dobbin Nine so excited again? What can I say? I'm always excited when I have amazing guests on the show. So who do we have on the show today? Who do we have on the show? Tell us. Hello. Good evening. Yes. Wow. I love that energy. Can you hear the energy, the vibe? Can you tell us what, what's your name? What you what's your name? Who, who are you on the show today? I'm sure I'm not listening to one. Who's this lovely lady with a great vibe, great energy as well on the show? Tell us what's your name. My name is Shalakwe Adeyemi. Fantastic. Um, and um, I write at likewithtutus.blogspot.com. Fantastic. Yeah, she's the, uh, you know, I mean, she said a wonderful name there. Proud, uh, amazing, lovely African name there. Shalakbe Adeyemi there. Welcome to the show. And she li- she writes on a blog called Life with Tutu, which is something we're going to be talking about on the show today, which is, uh, you know, it's a bit fictional and it's a bit of a real life, but we'll let you decide which is fictional, which is real life as well. As you know, 35 and social, we're all talking about mature dating. So the topics would be around, you know, things around dating or the single life as well. Again, welcome to the show. Uh, can I call you Tutu or should I call you Shalakbe? What do you prefer? You can call me either of the two i think i'll stick with tutu i think tutu is a it's a lovely name so we're talking about life with tutu as well so again i mean before we actually get into that you mentioned that you know it's you you write a blog you know this is from a blog uh so we, we're getting a bit of an insight uh from your you know mm-hmm. blog as well so i mean why did you start the blog and how long have you uh, been writing this blog uh as well mm. i started writing um, about on the blog in the year 2019, but I wasn't really consistent. So it was in the year 2020, I became really consistent about it, about the blog. And, you know, um, I really sat down and, you know, I told myself I want people to be entertained. I've always been passionate about entertainment, you understand? So I just wanted people to, you know, get into the blog, read stories, you understand, like stories that could take them to the seventh heaven of the life. You understand what I mean? Yes. So I want people, you know, I wanted, you know, people also to be like distracted from the day to day challenges of living. You understand what I mean? So um that was the idea behind the blog. And then um I have always loved writing stories. I've been writing stories since I was a kid. I, I the short stories are in my wardrobe as I speak. Amazing. Short stories, and of course, not published, and you know, for my eyes only. <laughs> Let me put it that way. So, um, it's 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 you know, I was discussing with someone one uh, some time ago, and I said I think I write better than I speak. Wow. I, writing is is for me an outpouring of who I am on paper oh, amazing. i love the description there and hopefully uh, we will get to hear some of your amazing amazing uh, write-ups that still uh, saved somewhere in the cupboard that it's only for your eyes only maybe we'll get to hear we never know uh, as well and if you say that you speak uh, you write you write more than you speak i mean i can't wait to hear or to see or to read about uh, what you've been uh, creating so far in your amazing uh, creative uh, uh, time as well. So I mean, today, what, what are we gonna? What's the flavor today? What are you gonna be telling us about in the in the fictional or reality world of your mind uh, this amazing evening? I'm going to be talking about um, the fictional world of my blog. I'm going to be talking about what gives me the ideas that I get. We call it the news. How I get my news. Um, the driving force behind what will make me make an average writer. Uh, like an inspiration. Under what voice is inspiration. So basically I'm going to be talking about that. I'm also going to be talking about um, one of the stories on the blog. Yes. Okay. So that. Fantastic. 
Okay, so which one are we gonna? What, what one are you gonna? You know, uh, bless us with this amazing evening. Um, like I said earlier, I'll be talking about my news. I'll be talking about the stories on my blog, um, and um, I'll be talking about how and when I write. Okay. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. So, you know, you know, the floor is yours. Carry on, you know, get on and, and, and tell us. I, I'm, I'm, I can't wait. I'm so excited uh, to, to hear or, you know, to feel, you know, this amazing stories uh, you have been writing as well. Uh, which, which would you be uh, starting with this evening? I'm going to start with Dawn. Okay. One of the stories on my blog. Yeah. One of the stories on my blog, I'll be talking about Dawn. Um, it's usually my stories are in series. You know, you have a part one leading down to probably a part ten. You understand? Because I want people to read, and I don't want people to be bored while reading. You understand? I want you to like be, you know, um, be caught up in the story, like you are like living the story. So we are going to be talking about Dawn and maybe another story on the blog as well. Yes, and how I get my ideas. I'm also a poet, so um, and a scriptwriter. So um, all of that will come to fore this evening. Okay, fantastic. Please uh, carry on. Let's hear about Dawn. Okay, so Dawn is about um, a gentleman, a man who, um, an ambitious man but who um, has been um, raised in poverty, has known poverty all his life. And, um, you know, he got married and uh, to the love of his life. And um, you understand, they were living in one room somewhere in one dingy part of Lagos. And, you know, they were just trying to get by until he met with uh, Chuk during one of the antenatal visits um, to the hospital because his wife, uh, Natasha Nash, for short, was um, pregnant. And you know, you know, pregnant women usually go for natal, you know, checkups and all. So he met Chuk, who also, you know, uh, was they were also he was also using the same hospital because his wife was pregnant. And you know, the chance meeting with Chuk, Chuk you know, started up by helping and all, and um, helping them with bills, you know, sorting them out and stuff like that. But he had, um, he had a mission, you understand, all along, even from, you know, when he made friends with MNK, Chief made friends with MNK and all of that, he had, there was something in his mind, the, the help, the sorting out financially and all was, he had a motive, you understand, for helping him. Uh, which okay, was simply let me, to join him. let me bring it back okay. for a second. So, Dom, was it, we're talking about, Do, uh, the, the, the characters, is it called Dom or, or Dom? Yes. Okay, so. Make up Dom, yeah. Okay, so Dom went to the, met, met his the love of his life. They they went, you know, they got they were expecting a baby. Uh, they went to the hospital. Yes. They went to the hospital. Then, yes. then they met someone uh, called Chooks at the hospital. Yes. Okay. Exactly. So when when they met Chooks, yes. Chooks was very helpful to them. And, and at some point, Chooks then uh, you know had some ulterior motive in in the help it was yes. rendered to them. Yes. Wow. Please carry on. Okay. So, um, so Chuck had an ulterior motive. The ulterior motive was just to draw a mini case into the Shepherdhood. There's a group, an organization called the Shepherdhood, which you know they are um, hierarchy. And um, Chuck was mandated to get, you know, you know, he was brought in and he had to bring somebody in. You know how it works. So, um, so. Um, you know, eventually, you know, MNK, you know, told him, you know, stop teaching me how to, stop giving me fish. Teach me how to do my fishing, you understand? Teach me how to do the fishing myself. You know, I'm tired of collecting this money from you. You know, I want to be a man of my own. I want to take care of my family. I don't want my baby to be born into that one room apartment somewhere, you know, in Lagos. You understand? It's not conducive for a baby. You understand? And he... He, you know, enlisted his help. And Chuk, you know, appears to be reluctant at first, you know, because he really wanted to know the mind, the resolve. He wanted to know how determined and how hungry MNK was for success. You understand? You really need to be really, really, really hungry, you understand, to join the shepherdhood. 
because there's a price to pay for joining the Shepherd Group. Anyway, uh, it's apparently an ongoing price to be paid, you know. And um, just was like, ah, are you really sure you want to do this? You understand? Are you sure? You understand? The pathway to wealth is strewn with um, sons and sisters and all of that. And, but then Minko was, was desperate. He was like, ah, I, I, I would do anything. I just, I just need to lift my family out of poverty. I don't want my son born in that unsavory environment where, you know, we currently reside. And um, just was like, okay, I'll help you, you know, come, you know, meet me. I'll, you know, send my driver down to pick you up. You know, you meet, you meet my other business partners. That was how he described the Shepherdhood members to him. You know, meet my business partners, you understand, and... Um, you know, we'll, you know, you will show you, you know, the ropes. And so he sent uh, for him in case, you understand. And in any case, you know, went next to the business partners. They told him, don't worry, we'll change your life, we'll turn your life around. You know, all that you want, all that your heart desires, just, just think it and you'll get it. Just imagine anything that you want underneath the sun, you'll get it. You understand? So we promises like that, in any case, tells, you know, ah, this is, this is this is this is home, you know, you know, this is this is all I've ever wanted. And within three months was able to buy the place, move his family, the wife had given birth. And you know, life was like he was on a roller coaster of pleasure, you understand? And you know, things were moving on very fine for him. You understand, money was pouring him, he became, you know, an international businessman, you know, and all and all and all and all. But then it became time to pay the sacrifice. Wow. So what happened after? You got me intrigued now. What happened? Did he, what, was, was he able to pay the sacrifice? Did they hold him back? He was, he was reluctant to pay the sacrifice. But that had been, that had been planned to, you understand? Because, um, you know, what, woman, what, 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 what was the sacrifice? Because, what was the sacrifice? A woman sacrifice. Wow. Okay. Intriguing. Yes, a human sacrifice. A human sacrifice. A human sacrifice that you know that would it it would be a human that he would be sacrificing. A human that will mean a whole lot to him. It wouldn't be just any human. It would be a human very close to him. You know that's the essence of the sacrifice. You understand? Yeah. So a human very close to him. Someone that you know. He will be in everlasting sorrow about losing. Wow. So that's the sacrifice. Yes. So that was the sacrifice. So um so Chute was like, Okay, you you know, you, you need to you know, you know, we we've come to another stage, you understand, you need to do this, you need to pay the sacrifice and all of that and all of that. So eventually he had a dream, then Niki had a dream where he had to pick a parcel from somebody. And he did pick, you know, the parcel. And he woke up, his arm was warm. I know the next thing, a few minutes afterwards, he was called that his mom was very sick. You understand? In the village and all of that. And was like, ah, mom is sick. What's happening? And all of that. And he had to travel, you know. He traveled. By the time he got to the house, the family house in the village, he discovered people wailing. You know, in African culture, when somebody passes, usually you have a lot of sympathizers. A whole lot of sympathizers, even people that you did not call, will come and join. So you have lots of people crying and wailing and, you know, some people, you know, throwing themselves on the floor and, you know, yeah, all of that. So um, so basically that was what we said in any case when he got, you know, he was approaching the house. He wailed and then he saw the people, you know, crying and all of that and he knew that his mother had died. And so, you understand, he had to plan the burial. He was pressed for the, not just pressed for the, he was heartbroken. Mm. He was heartbroken because he knew that the dream had a connection with the loss of his mother. Wow. He knew there would be connect. And he, he, was, he, was, he was very sad because he felt his mother would have told him one or two things. You know, in his heart, he hoped, there was a part of him that hoped, ah, you know, maybe the mother could have told him, okay, I know that you had no choice in the matter and I forgive you or anything. Maybe he, 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 in his heart, he was looking at probably a way to be absorbed of the guilt that, you know, lay heavily on his heart. 
Some redemption. You understand? Yes, he wanted a kind of redemption, something. You understand? He wanted to be absorbed. You know, absorbed of, you know, the guilt and all. But um, unfortunately, he met his mother's um, cops. Wow. So, uh, yeah. Amazing. So the brother put some, the meeting, yeah, the burial, you know, it was planned, it was well done. You understand? I think a part of him definitely wanted, you understand, to give by the fitting burial. Uh, that was the least he could do. You understand? Kill as many cows as possible, call the people of Simba and Kaliba to grace the occasion, the burial ceremony, and all of that. And, um, you know, all of that was done. He stayed back for a bit to, you know, family meetings and all. And then before coming back to Lagos with his family. But he came back to Lagos with his family and his life was never the same again. Wow. Did he still have the money? Was the money still there or that, or that was the end of it? You know, what happened? Was that sacrifice paid? I hope we still have her. I hope we still have her. Oh my gosh. Hopefully we haven't lost her there. And uh, maybe the uh, Juju uh, uh, maybe uh, taking uh, the voice away. Anyway, we're going to take a short break now. I'll be back on the other side. I think there's more amazing stories coming out uh, from uh, Life with Tutu as well. I think that was quite intriguing. Stay locked on. Stay locked in. It's your host, Dobber 9 on Dobber 9 Radio. So what happened? Did he still have the wealth when he went back uh, to uh, his home? What happened? The wealth was there, but you agree with me, money isn't everything. Mm. Money isn't everything, you understand? And um, um, he came back, you know, started suffering terrible nightmares to find himself running and but running at one spot. And he would wake up, his heart in his mouth, breathing heavily, his blood pressure, you know, you know, was, you know, had arisen. He started having issues with high blood pressure. And um, he wasn't stable. He wasn't sleeping at night. He would just close his eyes and start having that dream of running, or better yet, nightmare of running on one spot. You understand? Just running, running, running on just, on just one spot. And he complained to Chuk, and Chuk was like, mm. he had, he was nonchalant about it, you understand? And you know, Chuk, you know, periodically Chuk kept reminding him, remember you said you could do anything, you would pay any price, you understand? Yeah. And there's this thing, be careful what you wish, wish for, you understand? Sometimes we wish for things that will eventually um, bring about uh, more uh, destruction, Wow. So anyway, he wanted wealth. He got wealth, but he had to pay, you know, a heavy price. You understand? For that wealth, his mother died, and then the nightmare started. The blood pressure to increase. You understand? He started having issues with high blood pressure. He didn't have peace of mind, you know, at this stage. And you know, Chip was like, okay, uh, well, with all these issues, well, they are not, they are not. You know, Chuk could not really allay his fears. He just told him uh, that he would, you know, get you know in touch with the the leader, you know, of the shepherd hood. You know, and said he would get in touch with the leader of shepherd hood and you know see about you know bringing about you know a relief of thoughts for him. You understand? And um, so um, afterwards, he was required to do another sacrifice. This time around, he was told his younger sister. The younger sister, he happened to love so much, his favorite, um, and that he was required to um, sacrifice her again to the shepherd hood. And then he was like, <laughs> no, 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 no. This, this, this is way too much. I'm yet to recover from losing my mom. You understand? My mother. And you are asking me to sacrifice my um, younger sister. The younger sister that I, you know, that I love so much, I'm really basically crazy about because this is a younger sister that made sacrifices for him in Ike. You understand? She yeah. went out of her way, you know, when she, you know, she, um, when Emenike was, you know, still 
very poor when he was wallowing in poverty. She got her first salary as a teacher because she she knew she got a part time job, you understand, while waiting for admission into the university. And she, you know, her first salary, she just gave it to a I was like, ah, girls, just have this, you understand. I know that, you know, you're going through a ter- terrible patch, you understand, and I need you to, you know, use this money to, you know, sort out yourself one way or the other. And he was so touched. That was something he kept remembering. Ah, a younger sister that did, you know, my sister, a sister that. My, you know, did this for me, gave me this. How can you expect me to sacrifice that? You understand? And he was like, Ah, no, 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 no. This is this is way too much. This is this is this is really beyond me. You know, he resisted. But you know, at a stage, after struggling and struggling and struggling, you know, with his conscience and arguing, we choked and you know, the back and forth. He knew that he had no choice because his hands were tight. Wow. You understand? Because he put his mother. The sacrifice of his mother was done unwillingly, better yet, unwittingly, because he just had a dream and he was giving, you know, a parcel. He collected it, and the next thing, a call came in that his mother had died. Mm. So he knew that even if he resisted, his sister would still die. So he set out to pay his sister one last visit. Wow. So he went, yes. So his sister was really missing. He went to see her in the east. He traveled down to see her. She was like, ah, ah, you've come all the way. You understand? Ah, you understand? The visit was like, ah, but I just want to see you. I miss you and all of that and all of that. And, you know, they went out to, you know, have dinner. And as he said, he started crying. He started crying. Because she was talking, telling him about her plans. You understand? Wanting to join an NGO once she's done with med school and all that. Plan. And he knew those plans would not see the light of day because she was going to die. So he was just crying uncontrollably at the restaurant. And she was like, ah, why are you crying? You understand? And all that. She was trying to, oh, she was, you know, she was puzzled. You understand? We're having a good time. And all of a sudden, you start crying. So um, eventually, they left the restaurant. And throughout the night, he could not sleep. You know? You know, he was just you know, staring at her so from They shared the same room. Separate beds. He was just staring at her. It was like, oh. Is this how it's going to end? His beloved sister, you understand? All because he agreed to join an organization that he never knew was a, was a cop. You understand? So um, he didn't sleep a week, and the next day he set out to come back to Lagos. Miss, you know, the flight was cancelled, bad weather conditions, and decided, okay, let me go by a comfortable, you know, transport company, you know, a, a bus. Uh, um, Transport. a bus that would take him from um, the east to Lagos. So, um, sorry, you said something? No, no, I'll listen to you. I'll listen to you. Sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, so he tried to come by, you know, bus, and um, unfortunately, the bus was involved with it in a fatal accident. He was the only one rescued alive, so to speak, but with consequences. So um, he was taken to the hospital, rushed back to the hospital, and um, it was discovered that um, you understand that he had um, issues with the spinal cord. His spinal cord, you know, was damaged. You understand, and yeah. um, he couldn't walk. He could no longer walk. He had no feeling in his legs. You know, at first he felt okay. The trauma and all, it will be better. The doctor tried to allay his fears. But, you know, the doctor um, actually spoke with Natasha, his wife. Um, and he told her the prognosis was very poor. The crash, the, the, the uh, bus accident was, you know, you know, was, you know, fatal and everything. And, you know, the prognosis for him in case was very, very poor. You understand? Even Chutz was surprised. Because Chutz also came down to this thing in the hospital. You know, he looked at him and was like, ah. he was surprised that he was still alive. You can imagine. Wow. Because that, that, yes, because afterwards it was revealed, it was revealed that he was never supposed to see his sister. He was just supposed to bring her picture, submit her picture to the, uh, to the shepherd hood, and then, you know, just pretend as if, you know, nothing was happening. He was not supposed to go visit. You understand? Yeah. Because she was really marked, uh, marked for um, 
and the sacrifice. Yeah. So it was not supposed to go with you. The accident was, um, it was supposed to draw him by the ears. So it was supposed to teach him a lesson, actually. You understand? But she felt he was going to die. But for some reason, he survived the accident. You know, he survived the accident. So um, he came home in a wheelchair, and they had to get a male nurse for him uh, because um, to help him, you know, with moving around and all of that and help also with using the um, convenience and all of that. So, um, so, um, so that was it. And then he started losing weight. He started losing weight. He lost a whole lot of weight. He was no longer happy. He was, um, he was depressed. Then to make matters uh, worse, his sister eventually died. You understand? You know she was marked for yes, um, sacrifice. Yes. To be used as a sacrificial lamp, so to speak. Mm. So everything, everything was just everything went downhill. The money was there. The money never left. Business was still very good. The money never left. You understand? But his health left. His health deteriorated. Everything was just going downhill. Everything was just going downhill for him in terms of his health, in terms of his emotional well-being. You understand? So everything was just going, you know, downhill for him, you know, at that point. Wow. Wow. Amazing. So eventually, did he die? What happened eventually to him? How did the story end? Well, <laughs> there is a twist at the end of the story. That's why it's called Dawn. Mm. Dawn. Um, <laughs> So, um, so Chips came in on one of the days, you understand, Chips came in to visit as usual. Chips was always doing that, coming in to visit. But his visits were always, his visits were always <laughs> things with one calamity or the other. Yes, because he would always come with, you have to do this, one sacrifice or the other. So this time around, he came visiting and said, okay, it's the turn of the daughter to go. That is, um, Emenike, favorite daughter, Neka. Emenike, Emenike loved this girl so, 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 so much. Um, he loved her so, 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 so much. She was like, um, Eneka was the child of comfort. Eneka was like his mother had come again. His mm. mother had come back tonight. You understand? So when she was born, he saw his mom. You understand? She was like the speaking image of his mom. He saw his mom. Ah, this is my mom. Come back. You understand? So my mom is here with me again. You understand? You understand? Like, um, ah, you know, a sort of comfort, great comfort. So when she came in and said, ah, hey, in a case, you know, is the next in line to be sacrificed. Ah, he went, he went the sick. He was, he was unconsolable. He started screaming. He was, he was, he was, was no, this cannot be happening. No, 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 snake. I was the essence of the world. I want my daughter to be comfortable. I want her. She was born with sickle cell anemia. I want my daughter to be okay. How uh, can you say she's going? She's supposed to grow and you know, bury me, not the other way around. No, this cannot be happening to me. He was, he was distraught. You understand? He has to be calmed down. He has to be given an injection for to quieten him, you know, and everything. And eventually. Um, he woke up only to discover that he was still in that dingy, dingy room in Mushi, that one room apartment. He discovered it was all a dream. Wow. Everything that happened, the attention with took everything that happened. The mansion, the duplex, the houses in, you know, um, abroad, the cars, the mansions, everywhere, the properties, everything, everything was in red. It was all a dream. Wow. So he just somebody waking him up in the morning, you know, hitting him and all of that. Wake up, now wake up because his wife, heavily pregnant, in that one room apartment. And he was like, ah, Natasha, what's happening? Ah, we are supposed to be in a mansion. Why are we in this room? What happened? <laughs> and she was like, this mansion. I beg, you have an interview now. Uh, Chu, Chu, the guy that, you know, we met at the data clinic with his wife, he said he should come over. He should, um, he sent the driver to pick you up this morning. It was like she sent the driver to pick me up. He looked down. The lone bed was there. The rickety jacket chair 
he was fed on. He stood up, looked at the chest, looked at the stove at the corner of the room, looked at everything. <laughs> you mean true? <laughs> so he stood up and went, you know, went outside to see the driver. And the driver was ah, Oga, Oga Chief said I should come and you know take you to his office now. You know, today you are supposed to be introduced to his business and I said, Come. Tell your God I don't want to have anything to do with him. <laughs> I don't want anything to do with him. I don't want anything to do with him. If I never come back to this house. Amazing. Nothing. I was, and when he was going back to his room, that room in Mushi, he blocked Chip's number. And the wife was like, ah, what happened? Nash was about to, you know, go out to boil water, you understand? Know, yeah. To, you know, for water to have a bath. You know, pregnant women and they're in the same places. And he was like, ah, what is, what's happening? What happened? You're back. What's happening? You're supposed to have gone with the driver. Now, he said, hmm, better is a dry muscle than uh, riches and wealth sit in so much unhappiness. Wow. So that was how paraphrased. So that was how it ended. Amazing. It was all a, it was all a dream. Again. It was all a dream. Yeah. Amazing. I love the narration of that story i think it's amazing i think it's wonderful i'm sure uh, the listeners enjoy that as well because you took us on a journey and brought us back right back to earth and also wow because i was thinking this is so real that something's going to happen but it was all a dream i mean tutu i think that's quite amazing as well um i can't wait to hear more of your amazing stories as well so tell us you know what story should we be looking forward to on on your next time being featured on the show what what is it don't tell us about the story just tell us maybe a bit of a summary about it because i love the intensity i love uh, the suspense around the story as well so what should we be looking forward uh, to uh, the next uh, feature um we're looking at another story um it's looking at another story I would actually be talking about um, a memoir. A memoir. Um, it's um, a story about a an experience, um, a heartbreaking experience. Let me put it that way. A heartbreaking have, experience. Um, Oh my God, I'm sure the ladies yeah. will want to hear about that as well. The heartbreaking experience. Or oh, am I wrong? Could it be a lady? Could it be a man? You need to tune in next time to find out and know what is going to be. Uh, Tutu, it's been amazing to have you on the show this evening. I can't wait to have you mm-hmm. back. I can't wait to have you back because you've made my, bo- my, my, my heart skip a bit in a second. I'm thinking, M&EK, Chooks, Natasha, what is going to happen? All those riches, people are dying. But no, yeah. it was all a dream. Fantastic. Yeah. Amazing, Tutu. It's been amazing <laughs> uh, as well on the sh- you know, to have you on the show. I can't wait to have you back. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the amazing session uh, with Tutu uh, this evening uh, as well. Tutu, what do you have to say to listeners uh, listening to you right now? Because I see the quite number of individuals tune in this evening. What do you have to say to them? Mm. Um, I want to say... Your life is your stage. Make sure you give the best performance ever on that stage. Hug that stage. Show, show the world the stuff you are made of on that stage. Never ever forget that you are the best ever version of yourself. Thank you. Amazing. The world is your stage. Perform on that stage yeah. to your best ability. Tutu, you couldn't have said it yeah. any better. I think that's a remarkable thing uh, to say and a great word of advice to anyone listening. It's been amazing to have you on the show. I can't wait to have you back. And uh, yes, have a great time. I can't wait. I can't wait. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, stay locked on, stay locked in. It's Saturday. You know why it is. We're going to be giving some amazing vibes on the show today. It's been wonderful to have Tutu on the show. It's your host, Dobber 9 on Dobber 9 Radio. Yeah.